things uh, work, which is not working. I think that we have to recouple or uh, reboot because it does it doesn't work. I, I can also use my finger uh, because my mother was so nice to give me the thing. Thank you. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I uh, say some introductory uh, remark. Um, well, okay. Um, the title uh, also included the word uh, sustainable future. Uh, so, of course, uh, after introducing the co the, the, the uh, the uh, UN uh, official definition of sustainability, I would try to say, OK, let's translate uh, sustainability in the field of nuclear. Thank you very much. OK, what does it mean, uh, I mean, uh, to have a, a, sustain or a more sustainable nuclear system in the nuclear field? Because sustain sustainability is a very, I mean, a broad uh, uh, concept. Um, and then the other point is that, uh, well, uh, again, we have only one hour, more or less, um, and, uh, and it will be mission impossible uh, to um, present all the interpretation of this sustainability in terms of the different uh, nuclear systems. So for this reason, I will concentrate, uh, actually, uh, my talk on, uh, on the fast reactors because they are considered also the most sustainable case if associated with their advanced fuel cycle. Um, but, but even to respect my colleagues which are uh, from, um, supporting other reactor, advanced reactor technology, in this slide you can also find uh, uh, some information regarding uh, these uh, two additional concept that for sure will not have time to, to present. OK, so we are talking about, uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, these uh, revolutionary designs that has said many times that they are at the conceptual phase, different, of course, a different uh, uh, stage of development depending on the, basically, the coolant uh, uh, technology. So this is the, the, uh, the first point that we say, well, first of all, we have to understand what does it mean sustainability when we, we are in the nuclear area. This is the, the, the very famous uh, 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 UN uh, official definition. When we talk about I mean, sustainable uh, nuclear definition, we think, I mean, I, I, I fully agree with this uh, interpretation which has been made by the US Department of Energy. It means that we have to improve significantly the uranium resource utilization, maximize the energy generation, minimize the waste generation, improve the safety, and li limit the proliferation risk. However, the system has also to be sustainable in, from the economic uh, viewpoint. So we cannot just address these uh, five things if the system is not ec economically affordable, because it means that at the end, it's, it's not, if it's not affordable, it's not sustainable. Okay? So don't, uh, don't minimize that this is also an important uh, uh, goal to be respected for all this system, because uh, very, it's very easy. In, in, in this world, if something is not economic, economically affordable, it will never fly. Okay. Um, what, I mean, in, in very general term, how to address those six criteria, again, from a general viewpoint, Point and we, before talking about the specific interpretation in terms of the nuclear power technology. Well, you know, if we wanted to, for instance, it, I mean, it, it should be, uh, we have said that, that it should maximize energy generation. So the system should, be, should have a high efficiency. How to get high efficiency? 
we need a high operating temperature, higher than the existing uh, uh, reactor. And additionally, in this way, we can also open a big road for non-electrical application, much more than currently. That we, uh, we have also already some deployments. But when we talk about very high temperature reactor, of course, uh, there are many other uh, uh, non electric applications which can be really, uh, I mean, non electrically industrial application which can be pursued. Then, natural uranium, I mean, uh, we have said that we wanted to have the best use of natural resources, which in, in nuclear means uh, uh, uranium, and have improved waste management. To do that, uh, I mean, this uh, system normally should be operated in a closing uh, fuel cycle. They also should use, but related to the advanced closing fuel cycles, there is also the use of advanced fuel, again, also to improve the energy generation. And these advanced fuels are normally mixed the uranium plutonium fuel, also minor active and based fuel in order to address the problem of the high level waste, and also why not the use of thorium for what we have said in the previous lecture. They have to remain, of course, uh, economically competitive with the, not only with the current reactors, but also with the future energy sources, non-nuclear non energy sources. They have also to excel in proliferation resistant physical protection. And uh, while we have a little bit investigated uh, this, uh, I mean, basic safety principle even at uh, the IEA, I would say that in light of what has been done, even uh, on the basis of the lesson learned uh, from Fukushima, and what the evolutionary reactor can already offer from the safety viewpoint, I think uh, that uh, the best interpretation of one of the ma major goals of the Generation 4 International uh, Forum, which was to, be, to excel in safety, in my view, the most realistic interpretation is this one safety performance should be at least, equi at least equivalent to the ones of the most advanced evolutionary reactors. When we talk about the reactor, which uh, are really approaching CDF of 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8, uh, to say that we want it to be better than that uh, is a little bit unrealistic. Uh, we are approaching uh, uh, probability of a meteorite uh, hitting the, the Earth. So I don't know if it's really realistic to talk about our safety performance even higher than uh, the current uh, evolutionary, most advanced evolutionary uh, reactors. As already said, uh, of course, uh, it's not trivial to address all of these uh, basic requirements. We need, in particular, advanced materials and fuels which, uh, whose qualification I mean, for development, test, and qualification can require even decades. As we say, there are uncertainty on the li licensing. We have talked about the licensing of SMR uh, and, and the, the, the issue related. You can imagine, for example, for uh, uh, re reactors. In some, even on, in some, let's say, fast, traditional fast reactor country like you has, uh, it has operated a number of experimental and, and uh, and uh, um, uh, demo plant, I mean SFR demo plant, uh, the regulate the 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 the, the, knowledge, the skill and the, the competence on on fast reactor at the level of regulator is almost zero. Okay, in this moment, they have really to create a new generation of skilled people in order to license this kind of uh, uh, reactors. Of course, this is not true for other parts of the world, like, for instance, in Russia, India, in China, in which, of course, uh, there is, a, I mean, a consistent number of real experts in the, in, the, uh, in the field. And we have said that all of them, they are still at the level of the conceptual uh, uh, phase. And the, all of them, including the supercritical water cooled reactor, which is, let's say, the natural extension of the current uh, technology, still require R&D, with associated, I mean, investment and, of course, also time before entering the industrial demonstration. And we have also um, 
stressed yesterday that depending on the operational experience of the different advanced reactor, at least the basic one, we may need in a, even to start from the experimental plant, like in the case of the gas fast reactor, which have never been operated so far. Some, in, in other cases, demonstration plant, for instance, a lead fast reactor, because at least there is a limited experience uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Russia because uh, they operated uh, some eight uh, uh, submarines uh, uh, powered by lead bismuth uh, fast reactor. And finally, I mean, of course, uh, the, the most mature fast reactor technology is SFR. As said, we have already accumulated worldwide 400 years of operation. And so at least in a fast reactor country is is credible that they can uh, develop immediately the prototype before the first of the kind, I mean, skipping the phase of the experimental demonstration plan. So this is again to demonstrate that different advanced uh, technologies are at a different stage of development. And also, of course, they require different R&D and different technology development. Last but not least, uh, also to, to take, uh, mean to, to, to talk some from time to time also of the associated fuel and fuel cycle, I wanted to stress again the fact that the, the uh, in industrial demonstration of the full close fuel cycle is still to be, I mean, cheap. Okay, we don't have an industrial demonstration of the of the uh, full close fuel cycle, even if, for instance, as for the uh, Recycling uh, uh, of uh, partitioning and, and uh, of, uh, of uh, minor actinides, there are already uh, uh, industrial pilot facility, for instance, in, in France. So we are in a good position, but we still miss a full industrial demonstration, which means that the phases of experimentation demonstration and, and, and prototype also concern not only the reactor but also the associated fuel and fuel cycle. So the six, uh, the most uh, known uh, innovative or Gen 4 reactors are this one, which I already showed even yesterday, sodium-cooled fast reactor with the two different uh, type. The, re the most common uh, type is the pool type, which the layout is very similar to an IPWR, let's say, in a simplified uh, way. Whilst there are other uh, um, uh, countries pursuing the loop type, which is, let's say, very similar to a PWR as in terms of uh, layout, there are pros and cons of each uh, concept. Uh, so we cannot say that one concept is better than uh, another, even from the safety uh, viewpoint. Then remaining on the fast reactor, the lead-cooled uh, fast uh, reactor, then gas-cooled fast reactor, very high temperature reactor, which of course is, uh, I mean, the next step of a high temperature reactor for which we have already considerable uh, uh, database of uh, operation. So there were a number of gas cooled reactors in operation worldwide, in particular in, uh, in the uh, UK. Um, but of course, here we are talking about the next generation. So uh, not, not operated at 700 degrees C, but uh, even 1,000 or more than 1,000 degrees C. This is the, the, the final uh, uh, goal of this uh, reactor. Supercritical water could reactor already mentioned many, many times. And so molten salt reactor, both cases, the one in which uh, the molten salt is used just as a coolant which allow, in particular, to operate the reactor at high temperature and, uh, and low pressure, but also the very case of the molten fuel salt uh, 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 reactor, which is a very innovative solution, even if it was already proved in Oak Ridge in the, in the 60s with an experimental reactor. This is the, 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 the main parameter of all this uh, uh, concept uh, in comparison. Sodium cooled fast reactor, the, the spectrum is fast, the coolant is sodium, outlet temperature 500, 550, operated in a closed fuel cycle. The power, well, again, it, it, here we have to be, to be careful when we talk about uh, the power, because it can be a little bit misleading. 
we, told, we have said that for all, all of this uh, system, depending on their state of development, we need experimental uh, reactor, demonstration plan, prototype before the first of all the kind. Well, when we talk about uh, the, the power in this sense, actually is the final goal okay, of the industrial reactor. What does it mean? That, for instance, there are cases in which, uh, for obvious reasons, even to contain the, the associated cost, the needed demo or prototype reactor our, have a limited uh, power output of some hundred megawatt electrical. But they are the demo plan in the, in the prototype of industrial sized reactor of higher power, okay? Let's take the case of France, Astrid. Astrid is designed, which is the prototype of, the French prototype of a sodium, of a Gen 4 uh, sodium cooled fast reactor. They are designing a reactor of a 600 megawatt electrical, but the goal is not then to have an industrial side reactor of a 600 megawatt electrical, not to have a medium sized uh, reactor, but they want to operate a prototype in order then in the future to have a, a, a fleet of reactor which uh, most probably will have a, 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 an electric power output of some 1,000 megawatt electric, so a large uh, reactor. So even this one, we have to, I mean, to be careful when we say the, 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 the goal, if it's the goal of the industrial size reactor of the prototype of the demo plan. Very high temperature reactor, thermal spectrum, the coolant normally is helium. helium as you say, can see, have, we have said, the, the goal is to reach uh, this uh, very high temperature. It means uh, substantial to have uh, 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 fuel and uh, structural materials able to withstand uh, to this very high temperature. Uh, up to 1,000 degrees C. Uh, normally, it's an open uh, fuel cycle, even if, in principle, there are study, ongoing studies even in recycling uh, that balls, uh, fuel balls that were presented, if I well remember, by Aliki this morning. And the, 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 the power output uh, intrinsically is, uh, is, uh, is low. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, because uh, uh, helium, uh, the, 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 I mean the, the reactor, because 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 the, the use of helium. Okay, so the reactor is very big, and since the reactor is very big, you have a limit in the in the in the uh, electrical uh, power. Lead fast reactors uh, is a fast uh, reactor. Coolant can be lead, but also lead bismuth. The reason for lead bismuth is that is an eutectic, so. The melting point is lower, and there are some advantages to use, of course, uh, for many, many different reasons, uh, a coolant uh, with a melting point lower than, uh, than uh, lead, which is a 300 and something. Operated at this uh, temperature, closed fuel cycle. Again, here there are design, I mean, with different uh, power output. Uh, uh, here, the limit is the fact that, of course, a lead has a density which is 10 times than, than water. And of course, if you wanted to, so it means that, of course, at a certain point, it can pose a pro, I mean, problem for the seismic design of the, uh, the reactor. We have big uh, component, I mean, which, uh, with, with, the cool, with the very heavy uh, coolant. So okay, uh, under uh, seismic motion, of course, uh, you may have problem to design such a reactor. And as a consequence, uh, this most probably will pose a limit in the maximum power of the reactor just because of the dimension of the different uh, comp components like steam generator, pumps, etc. Supercritical water-cooled reactor, well, the most uh, said one are, 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 have actually a thermal spectrum, even if there are some concepts proposing uh, uh, the supercritical water-cooled reactor in at least in epithermal uh, uh, regime, due to the fact that the, the very low density of water used in this reactor. And as you can see, uh, what we have said before, the, the output, of, the expected output temperature is much higher than the current light water reactor. If they are thermal reactor, of course, they are supposed to be operated in an open cycle. And even here, we have a very different uh, design with different uh, power up. Gas fast reactor, well, this is really, I mean, the dream uh, to have this kind of uh, performance, but we are very, fa very far from that because uh, they require a lot of uh, R&D, and in particular, even an experimental plant, which for sure will, be, will, will have uh, 
uh, performs much lower than this one and this one because it will be an experimental plan. Please. There is a good for very uh, uh, well, normally it's graphite. Yeah. So, like, I mean, the design is the basic design of an HTGR, uh, of an high temperature uh, reactor. The point is that uh, it should be operated at higher temperature regime, which means, of course, to, for instance, to have different structural materials, okay? Ceramics may be interesting for this application. Please. Well, for sure, at least the 10 points higher than, than, than the current fleet. So the, the most advanced uh, evolutionary design, they, they, they can achieve 34% of efficiency. Here, the goal is to go beyond the 4%. Okay? And there are design of supercritical water cooled reactor that can achieve a 48%, I mean, theoretically, okay? So, but but, he, but the, the reason is that the supercritical water could react is like a BWR, eh? is a direct, uh, uh, is a direct uh, um, cycle uh, reactor. So these are also the, the temperature of the steam to the, uh, to the uh, turbine generator, okay? In the other case, are the, 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 the temperature of the primary system and normally associated with the, with the secondary uh, system. Of course, uh, the thermodynamic of the secondary system is much lower the entropy than, than the primary system. And so you can achieve only 42, 43%. Okay, so now coming back to the question of sustainability. Uh, I've already played 15 minutes, my love, my God. So, um, uh, let, let's come back to the question of the sustainability, okay? And let's see uh, how to address, uh, I mean, more, I mean, for more substantial viewpoint, this question of sustainability. Well, when we say uh, 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 sustainability, we have, we have seen before that we talk about, for instance, the best use of the fuel reserves which in order to simplify the picture, let's talk about only uranium, even if we know very well that there is some alternative, like for instance, thorium, okay? But just to limit the, the picture, let's confine our, our uh, talk to the uranium resources. It's very well known that uh, if you continue to burn uh, uranium at a certain moment uh, to, to operate a light water reactor, in an open uh, fuel uh, cycle, well, at a certain moment, we may have uh, a potential stress on the use of these uh, resources, at least in some part of the world. And here, let me introduce another important uh, concept. When we say uranium resources, Alika, Alika uh, I hope that you confirm that. I mean, we know that in this moment, uh, we are plenty of uranium. Okay? We use the, the, the last red book, uh, say, ah, we have uh, resources uh, for at least 100 uh, uh, years, if we consider the fleet uh, overall in the, in the world. Okay? However, there are two elements to be considered uh, here. That first of all, these resources are not, uh, the availability of the resources is not homogeneous. It depends on the region of the world, first point. And then the potential stress, the potential stress may happen well before the problem, okay? Why? Well, because, because of the intrinsic technology, when we build a reactor, a, a, a reactor, actually we are committing the, the uranium fuel not only for today, okay? But the, current, the evolution reactor are designed for 60 years of operation and also, in perspective, why not 80, 80 years? So why not 100 years? So it means that you are committing res uranium resources not only for today, but also for one century. Okay? So if we start really to, in some part of the world, uh, let's say China, to build a number of light water reactor operated in a fuel cycle with a very low efficiency. I mean, one three percent of the uh, potential energy we are using with light water reactor in open fuel cycle. 
you are committing a lot of resources, not only for, for uh, today, but for the next 60 years. So it means that from a market viewpoint, uh, you may have, in some part of the region, you may really have a, pro a potential stress, okay? a potential mechanism which gives stress on the uranium resource viability, even for this mechanism of the committed uranium, uh, the uranium that you committed to today for the operation in six, uh, eight years from, from now. Yeah, but what, what I mean is that uh, is is like or any other good on the stock market. Okay, is, what, what is what is worth in the price of a good is the expectation. Okay? It's like with gold. Okay, if you are if if you think that for some mechanism, someone will be short of some good, the, the price increases. So my, my concept here is that what we apply to the normal goods in the stock market also applies to uranium. What we apply to oil or gas, etc., it applies also to, to uranium. With this mechanism, okay, that maybe, I mean, with gold, maybe it's just a question that you, you wanted to use gold, even for technology uh, uh, reason, today. With, the, with the nuclear power plant, it's different because there is the, commi the long-term commitment if I, if, I, if I invest 10 billion euro today, I want to be sure that I have uranium for the next 60, 80 years. Otherwise, I will never amortize my, 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 this is the difference with another good, okay? I, I, I don't know if it was clear, but it's a unique feature of nuclear power, of a good for nuclear power with respect to other goods which are in the stock market. And the mechanism is always uh, the same. The price is not really related to the current situation. It's the forecast. It's the, what, what is the expectation? This makes the price, I mean, can give a booster to the price. Even if in this moment, well, why? Because the expectation is pretty low. Unless we look at some part of the, of the world, for instance, China and India. In those regions, there could be this stress. Okay, I'm not, I, it's not realistic to think that we will have a stress in the uranium resources in Europe, okay, for the next 30, 40 years. But how about the China? If it's true that the China in a few decades will have a fleet to correspond to the fleet of the rest of the world, well, let's see the price of the uranium. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, the third bullet. Eh? So the potential future scale can be a problem at least in some region of the world in which, for instance, there has been an impact from the Fukushima event, but despite of that, they have confirmed their strong commitment to go nuclear. Eh? And they are building 20, 30 uh, nuclear power plants in a, in, a, in a country, and they are very much committed on nuclear power even on the long uh, term. Oh, the other part, is, which has always uh, somehow hidden, is that uh, even mining uh, uranium, okay? I don't know what is the state of knowledge of that, but please read uh, some papers. In India, there is a big, uh, I've seen recently, uh, something shocking regarding, maybe it's, it's just a, a journalistic exaggeration, but there is a, a, a mine which is very much contested because of the environmental impact of the mine itself. It's not nothing to see with the use of uranium, with the extraction of uranium, the mining of uranium. Anyway, it's true that it's not so easy to operate a uranium mine. There are environmental issues. So the less we, despite the question of radioactivity, etc., the less we have to extract the better. Okay, because it means that we need less mining of uranium. Okay, so this is also another factor to be considered when we use natural uranium and we we, we consider the the uh, the uh, uh, the life cycle analysis of the use of a particular uh, uh, resources or technology. So, finally. Last but not least, we know very well that operating uh, 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 a uh, light water uh, reactor fleet in one through, well, generate a large amount of spent fuel, in particular of transuranic plutonium, major and minor actinides, 
in particular plutonium and minor actinides, which are the, the most hazardous nuclear waste and which are, on the, let's say, on the critical path of the high-level waste to be managed even for the very long term. If we summarize, I mean, what is the, 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 the issue posed by, I mean, come, which comes from, from the operation of a light water reactor in, in a one through uh, 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 fuel cycle is that the low efficiency in the fuel uses, 1-3%, low thermal efficiency, 30-34%, uh, okay, by using water as a coolant. And I want to remember that the gas plan, I mean, the efficiency is 65%. Uh, so we have to be competitive with the energy plant, which have the, an efficiency of 60-65%. Um, ah, the other point is that, of course, uh, the fact that we have a, a moderator also, I mean, has a, as a consequence, the, 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 uh, the power density of the reactor is pretty low. And so, of course, we have big uh, uh, reactors. So let's see how fast reactor can address uh, this sustainability, please. No, it's not. It was not for sure my lecture because I don't have this uh, this expertise. But I, I, I think that to open a new mine is an issue. I'm not an expert in this sector. By the way, there will be lecture uh, next. Uh, Amparo will be here, OK? And so people from the nuclear uh, energy fuel cycle and waste, they are in particular responsible for the Red Book, uh, which collects the data on uh, all the uranium availability. And I, I, I would, I mean, please, please address this uh, issue. I mean, accord, of course, I have a limited uh, uh, information on that related to the fast reactor uh, technology. For sure, it represents an issue, OK? And it's not an easy task to deal with, even with the population. Independent, they don't care about the use of nuclear. It's not because uh, they care about the nuclear power plants. They care because there is an environmental impact in opening an uranium mine, and the, 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 the the environment is dirty, OK? I've seen, I mean, uh, again, I'm not an expert. I've seen recently an uh, article in newspaper, in particular in India. And I asked the, these people from the other division if it's a, is, is a uh, journalistic uh, exaggeration or is something real. Well, the reality is usually is in between, is an issue, OK? Then, of course, uh, the, the journalist has is, uh, exaggerated in order to create uh, the case. But it's is, is, is true that uranium mine pose environmental issue. And of course, if there is a way to limit the amount of uranium to be extracted from the mine, is, 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 a, is an advantage. Well, maybe they should use all the depleted uranium instead of uh, with fast reactor, yes. <laughs> OK, so um, I really need to, because uh, I'm a fast reactor guy. So my, my, my attitude is that people are not, I mean, even in, above all, you, you are not supposed, the most probably, to be involved in a fast reactor program, OK? So to go to, into the details of the technology really doesn't make sense for that. But at least uh, you should know what are the physical and technical reasons why fast reactor can address the, sustainable, the sustainability, the criteria of sustainability, OK? And they want to show you in numbers, with really with, with looking at the uh, cross-section and just to explain why. Unless, of course, all of you already know that. Do you know why fast reactor can really be sustainable in terms of uh, uranium resource minimization, 
waste uh, matter. Maybe some of you, but not all of you. Okay. So in the in the following uh, slide, I, I hope that okay, if someone some of you of course will laugh at that. Okay. But in my view, instead of talking about uh, technology, and you will never use this because you will never uh, uh, involved in a, in a faster reactor uh, uh, project, so even from the education viewpoint, the added value is very low. Is I think that is better as a future manager that if you are uh, if you are, for instance, even involved in interaction with the population with the other nuclear community, at least you know why a fast reactor can solve the problem of uranium reserve or can minimize the problem of uranium resources and waste management, okay? Because it's part, it should be part of your basis knowledge, okay? So let me allow you to go through some basic concepts in order to explain why fast reactors are good for, good for the purpose, okay? Do we agree on that? Just take half an hour to do that. So the first point that should be uh, remembered is the, well, the basic physics, okay? So the microscopic cross-section uh, versus neutron energy. And one of the concepts uh, that we should fix immediately in, the, in the, our mind are from this uh, graph are two. Uh, here we have the microscopic cr cross-section of the uranium-35 total fission. Uranium-38, there is the, 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 the famous ratio, okay? There is a no fission. Uranium-38 is a fertile, but can be fissioned if the neutron energy is beyond one MeV. And then we have the uranium-38 ab absorption. And another point, uh, part of the question of uranium-38, that we have to have clear in mind is that when, incre when we increase uh, the energy, the cross-section normally reduces. Okay? The probability is even obvious. Okay? If, if, if uh, the, the bullet uh, increases this energy, the, the, the probability to hit uh, the target uh, is lower. Okay, is a very simple concept which is respected even by nature. Okay, good. The other point that we need, the other concept that we need, is the concept of conversion versus breeding ratio, was that we have already presented uh, yesterday. But let me remind in another uh, uh, way, which is functional to what I have to say uh, in, in coming uh, uh, slide. Okay, so let's uh, consider the, the typical uh, uh, chain reaction. Okay in which uh, we, we burn some fissile material, in this case, plutonium-39, and we generate the same kind of uh, fissile material, again, plutonium-239. So we have a, a, neutron, uh, a, a neutron which uh, uh, needs fission, and then we have fission products, we have heat neutrons, which are the neutrons created per neutron absorbed in the fission, okay? And what, we, what, we, uh, what, what is the destiny of these eta neutrons? Well, first of all, one of them is used to maintain the, the chain reactor, the chain uh, reaction, okay? Then we have eta minus one and neutrons, of which P are lost. Lost because they are absorbed and, and, and not uh, uh, used for, the, for other purposes. They are lost because, for instance, absorbed in the structural materials or leaking from, uh, from the system, and they are lost. And so we remain eta minus one pi neutrons, for which we can, for instance, fertilize uranium-38 and generate new plutonium-239. OK, so it is just a definition. Then we need also the concept of number of fissile nuclei produced per fissile nucleus destroyed, which is, is, is very trivial, is eta minus one, one which is uh, this one, minus P. These are the number of, of neutrons which are available to make this job. OK? If this, this is another uh, uh, definition. If B is less than 1, we say that we just convert uh, fertile material into fissile material. If B is greater than 1, then the reactor breathes because it produces more fissile material than the one which is destroyed by the system uh, uh, itself. And B is called breathing ratio. Again, in a, just, just a, a definition. OK, now, with this very simple uh, uh, definition, let's see things, what happens in a thermal reactor, in a fast reactor with respect to the thermal reactor. 
These are the spectrum, okay? The the uh, the the neutron, the normalized uh, uh, flux versus neutron energy. This is a tip. The red curve is a typical spectrum of a thermal reactor in which, like in a fast reactor, neutrons are generated around one one uh, MeV, but then purposely they are slowing down, and then of course we have this peak at the thermal uh, uh, energy. In the case of a fast reactor, we have the concentration of all the, all the neutrons uh, more or less at the fission or around the fission energy. Why? Because we don't have any moderator. Okay? So this is very simple. Now, we couple this concept with the, 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 the heater that we have defined previously, the number of neutrons which are produced per neutron absorbed in fission, with this spectrum, and we see that uh, the, the curve of eta is this one versus the energy. Uh, the, 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 the energy uh, uh, line is the same here and, and here. And we can clearly see here that whatever is uh, the fissile the fertile material, the number of neutrons, as the eta, the number of neutron production per neutron absorbed in fissile materials is much higher at high energy with respect to low energy. Okay? So this is a real typical case of a fast reactor. In which, what does it mean? That in a fast reactor, we have a larger number of neutrons available. There is an excess of neutrons. Okay? And the reason is physical. It comes from here, okay? from the cross section. And here you can see in numbers, look at, for instance, the case of plutonium-39. In a thermal reactor, this number is a 2.06. In, 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 in a fast reactor, it's 2.75. So if we consider that, on average, we have one neutron which of, of, out of that 2.06 or 2.75, one we need for, to maintain the, the, the chain reactor, uh, reaction. One, more or less one, depending on the system, is lost because of the leakage or because of the absorption. It means that in a fast reactor, more or less, for each event, we have more or less one neutron available, extra neutron. Okay? We have an excess of neutrons. This is also confirmed by, if we consider this, another very simple concept, which is uh, the ratio of uh, fission, fission over absorption. Okay? And here you have the case, this, this, this parameter, okay, this ratio, fission absorption. In the case, the blue, the blue column is for a PWR. The red column is for a, sodium, for a typical sodium cooled fast reactor. And again, you see that in a fast reactor, the, this ratio is, is much higher than a, a, a PWR. What does it mean? That in a, in a uh, nuclear, in a, in a fast reactor spectrum, fission prevails on absorption. Okay? And if fission prevails on, 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 on absorption, again, is another reason why we have an excess of neutrons. Okay? Because at each fission event, we, create, we generate new neutrons. The other point is that if in a fissile material, we absorb a neutron. The radioactive capture is such that we generate a higher mass radioisotope. So it means that we generate other minor actinides just for absorption. If we have a fission, we don't generate this higher actinide, but we generate the fission products. So the, the advantage of a, of a fast reactor is that we have excess of neutrons and less higher actinide generated in, with respect of a thermal reactor. And this gives uh, the possible, in particular, the excess of, uh, of uh, neutrons uh, allows it to be very flexible in the design of a fast reactor. As already, I mean, observed by Rico Fermi in 1944, Fast reactors allow us to design a reactor depending on your needs, even to address, if you want, different policy needs. 
Okay, and then I will give you some example, even practical example worldwide. Because of this excess of neutrons, I can use uh, this, this additional neutrons to breathe and to generate, uh, to have a, a breathing uh, uh, gain, to have more fissile material with respect to the one which is burned. But with, if my, 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 my goal is not uh, to, I mean, to breed the fissile material, but to reduce, for instance, the nuclear waste, I can use uh, that extra neutrons to burn true or minor actinides. And then I can also address both issue, of course, uh, with the trade-off. I can design a reactor, which is, uh, for instance, uh, in, the, in, the, in the driving part of the core is a breeder. And in the blanket is a, is a burner. So I can also design, because of this particular uh, feature, a breathing burn reactor. And finally, I can also design a so-called self-sustaining cycle or isogenerator system in which the, the, the conversion ratio is one. And it's a, a system very simple in which I fit the reactor with the uh, fissile material the react since the CR is e equal one, the reactor just generate the same amount of uh, fissile material that he needs. Okay, and the only output are fission products. Okay, so I mean this is the big advantage of to operate a nuclear power plant as in, in fast spectrum. Very much related to that is the doubling time, which is important for a particular for some countries. And let me uh, say very simple things, uh, which uh, really demonstrate that this flexibility of fast reactor can address different needs and even different energy policy. Let me give the case of Europe. Okay, in Europe uh, we don't uh, really uh, forecast a big uh, growth just to be to be optimistic. Uh, uh, we don't, and this is a big growth of nuclear power plant in in the coming decades. So of course, uh, uranium is, I mean, is available, okay? We are plenty of uranium, even at low price, okay? We have also a lot of plutonium uh, uh, as a con, because we have operated the reactor for decades, okay? Look at the case of uh, UK. Hmm? UK have 200 uh, tons of plutonium, okay? So, well, to say, well, I would, I'm going to propose a, a breeder to UK. Well, you laugh at me, at least. Okay, say, so what, what? I have a problem to, to get rid of 200 uh, tons of plutonium. You want to generate other plutonium. For what? Okay. And on top of that, I don't have, okay, I have a new program. But we will see in the future. But at the moment, I really don't need to generate other fissile materials. <laughs> but the same also if you for, for the rest of you. Like France may have may be an exception because of their large uh, fleet. Okay, so in such a case, uh, does it make sense uh, to to uh, design a fast reactor with the breathing gain of 1.4, which means that it generates 40 percent more fissile material than the one uh, burnt? Uh, I would say no. Okay, but maybe I can design a fast reactor to burn both the plutonium and the minor actinides, okay? So in this case, I mean, I have, a, I have a, my energy policy, I have my nuclear policy, and they can use the fast reactor in order to address my problem, which is to convince people to, to decrease the, the requirements of the geological repository. So I wanted to have a fast reactor, but most probably a burner, or maximum a, a, a isogenerator system. Okay? Maybe isogenerator system is the best in, in, in perspective, so that I don't need to mine any other uh, uranium, because it's self-sufficient in terms of fissile. And the, the only output is fission products, uh, 300 uh, years, 300, 700 years, and I'm done with the high-level waste. Okay? But if I am India, I'm completely in a different picture. First of all, because I have expectation of, of nuclear power uh, plant uh, deployment much larger than, I mean, I want to reach Europe, okay? Now I'm just a few nuclear power plants, but in the future I wanted to have a very large uh, fleet, so the derivative is very, is very big, okay? So I have big plant for nuclear power plant uh, deployment. And in the meantime, I'm short of uh, uranium, okay? And 
I don't, I don't have generated all that plutonium that other countries have generated. Okay? So in such a case, I have a completely different uh, picture, a dif different, even a different, different needs, and, and as a consequence, a different policy. In such a case, I'm interested, first of all, in breeding, okay? because I don't have the, the, the fissile material. So I need breeding. And if I want to even to have, a, I mean, a quick uh, uh, um, uh, deployment of these reactors, I also need short doubling time because what is the, 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 the purpose? The purpose is that, is that we want to generate extra fissile material with a breeder in order, why? I mean, I don't need an extra generation for that reactor. For that reactor, I need like an ISO generator. I wanted to have an extra generation to feed another reactor, OK? So I not only have sufficient fissile material for that reactor, but at even I generate the fissile material needed for a second reactor. In which time I want to do the, the job? If the physics allow me to do that only in one century, I'm not very interested. I'm not interested to feed a, a second reactor in one century. But if the physics allow me to go faster, ah, OK? Well, there are systems studied in India with a doubling time of a few years, OK? So it means that in a few years, they may, thanks to the fast reactor uh, technology, they can feed, they can have, without touching any mine, without touching any uranium, they can feed a second reactor, OK? And even this one is due to the property of the fast reactor. So if we, let, let's see, please, please. Not necessarily, because, I mean, to have a, uh, uh, there are problems with the, with the safety. So it's always better to put some uranium, because otherwise, as a beta is too low, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's true. That that they can use a depleted uranium. It's not they don't need. Uh, I mean, uh, enriched uranium. And there, and we are, you know, the stockpile that we have from the backstream of the enrichment. We have a lot of material, which is even less sensible that or it's the uranium or, or plutonium, OK? So I can do that. Uh, and actually, no one is proposing a pure plutonium uh, a fuel. Well, there are concepts which propose a fertile-free reactor if you don't want to have the breathing, OK, or generation of other acronyms. But in general, we, we pro uh, they propose uranium, plutonium, both oxide and metal, and also nitride, because they have a different uh, performance. But the point is to use, of course, because of for safety reason, okay, for the beat, and it's not also the beat, there are even other safety parameters which are affected, of course, by the, uh, the fact to use a high, um, uh, higher actinate. Okay, so let's translate uh, all this concept in some numbers. Uh, but is, this is really a fewer theoretical exercise, because there is a big uh, assumption in that. The assumption is that we, we consider that the, 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 the world is completely homogeneous. Okay? So it means that uh, all the reactor fleet of the world would be composed by like typical PWR, okay? with a certain uh, burn up and power, etc. Of course, it's an assumption. It's an assumption to give some numbers, which are not the numbers, but are figure of merit to understand the difference between operating a, a fleet as a light water reactor in an open fuel cycle instead of a fast reactor in a closed fuel cycle. Okay? So don't keep uh, these numbers as Bibles, as bi a number from the Bibles, but keep this number in order to understand the concept. Okay? Well, what is this graph? These graphs show, um, first of all, these two horizontal lines, which represent the conventional resources in terms of uranium, the non-conventional resources, and the seawater. You know that there is a lot of the, I mean, there is a uranium in seawater, but the PPM are so, 
small that at the moment is not convenient to extract the uranium from uh, from seawater. But one day, maybe, and if it's possible, the problem of uranium uh, uh, availability is solved, okay? Because uh, then we are really plenty of, of uranium, if we can extract all the uranium in the sea. But this is not the case. What are the conventional resources? The conventional resources sum up all the uranium uh, uh, resources that we already know. Eh? So it means that, of course, uh, with geological uh, inspection, we know how much uranium we are. And also the pronosticated, uh, we don't know exactly where they are, but they, we know that they, that there are these resources. Uh, the amount of that estimate, recently estimated is 1.5, 10 to the 7 tons. Okay. It's a number. It doesn't matter what. These are the non-conventional resources. For instance, uh, phosphates. Phosphates, uh, they, they, they contain a lot of uranium. But again, it's not so simple to extract it, partition this uranium. So at the moment, uh, they're not used. Okay? We prefer to use uh, these conventional uh, resources, okay? which are available. But of course, uh, there is also the possibility. It's, not, it's feasible. Well, now to extract uh, uranium from seawater is almost unfeasible. There are some innovative techniques, but it's uh, really a preliminary uh, stage. This we can do it. Of course, increasing, for instance, the price of uh, uranium eh, the, in the stock market. Okay, so we can say that more or less are there. Okay, it's not, at the moment it's not convenient, but maybe one day it will be convenient also to extract these resources, and so that we jump from 1.5 to 4. Okay, good. Then we compare these available resources with this theoretical. Uh, nuclear power plant fleet, homogeneous nuclear power plant fleet in the world, which is, I repeat myself, is not the case, it's not true. Okay. But just to, to make an assumption. Okay, if we consider such a kind of uh, 499 uh, reactors, all of them all equal, or PWR of a certain type, we see that over the time, the needed uranium is this one. Okay? So, with this assumption, we cross the conventional resources more or less at the end of this century. Okay? Actually, it's not uh, just to say that we are not, uh, it's not an exact number because it has been estimated in a different way that the, the, the uranium resources available in the Red Book is already more than one, more than one century. Okay? So, we, you immediately understand that this number is not completely true. But does it make a lot of difference to say end of the century or uh, 2120? Okay? It means that at the end of this century, we may have a stress in the uranium availability. Okay? Good. Of course, if we consider also the non-conventional resources, the situation is much better, even with this hypothetical nuclear power plant fleet, because we cross this red curve more or less at, at the mid of next century. Okay? So, well, whatever it is, the situation is that at, at a certain point, with, I mean, light water reactor operated in a fuel cycle, we may have a stress in the uranium resources. This is not at all the case if, for instance, if we have isogenerator. Isogenerated means CR equal 1. Okay? The, the, we we, we uh, destroy as much uh, uh, fissile material as we generate. The situation is much better. Okay? We reach uh, the non-conventional resources at the end of next century. But if we operate a faster reactor with the high breathing gain, and also with a, a, a very uh, a low, uh, I mean, uh, 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 doubling time, then we have resources available. We, we even don't uh, cross the conventional resources. Okay? So this is a, a very practical way to demonstrate that fast reactor in a, in, in a closed fuel cycle address one of the criteria of sustainability. Of uranium, of best use of uranium resources. 
How about the waste management? We have just five minutes, I think, and to, 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 do, to, to, to talk about this waste management, and we are done. OK, so let's start from the very beginning. We know that in, uh, when we have a fission, we generate fission product, and then, uh, and then uh, we have this chain for the, uh, uh, the uh, plutonium generation from uranium-38. But then we also produce a minor actinides, in particular, these are three guys, plutonium, americium, and curium. And these minor actinides are actually the responsible for the management of the high-level waste, the long, in particular the long-lived uh, uh, waste, that um, they, they, they remain at a, at a radioactivity higher than the uh, natural background, even for more than 1,000 years. So they are highly radiotoxic, and they also are, they are also big heat emitting, okay? with consequences on the store on their storage, in particular in the geological repository. Let me also, I mean, just to, to, to be to be honest, we have also to remember that in any case, this part of the waste represents really a tiny fraction, okay? of the waste, because we are talking about, in the case of minor actin, 0.1%, okay? And in the case of plutonium, 0.9%, okay? So we have, anyway, to have in mind the, the numbers. They are the most hazardous, but anyway, they represent, in any case, a tiny fraction of the spent nuclear uh, fuel. But when we operate a large fleet, this small fraction can become big numbers in terms of overall amount of, of material to be disposed of. So what we can uh, do with, with well, let, let's come back to the question of fast reactor and how to address the other point of the sustainability that to, is to facilitate the waste uh, uh, management. Well, the long-term radiative uh, activities is, is driven but is dominated by these uh, three isotopes, plutonium-241, americium-241, and neptunium-237. So, of course, what we have to, and, and of course, they are, they are chain, uh, they are decay chain. Uh, so, of course, if we wanted to, re to, to facilitate the, the, the management of the high-level waves, these are the, the, the guys to be targeted, to be destroyed, okay? But to be destroyed in which way? Not without absorption and, and radioactive capture, because otherwise we generate other minor actinides, which are also highly radioactive. Okay? We have to destroy them. And to destroy them, they have to undergo fission, not absorption. Okay? Because with fission, from, from that guy, we generate the fission product, okay? which decay in between three and 700 uh, Years and, no, and not new minor activates. Okay, and then I can show show that in numbers what this means. Ah, sorry. And who, what is the system which in which fission prevail on absorption? Fast reactors for the cross section that have, for the the, 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 the the data that I've shown before. Okay, the 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 uh, you remember the ratio between fission and absorption which is much higher in a fast reactor than in a thermal reactor. And these are the consequences. If you look at the guy, I mean, one of the most hazards of, because of, of him and all the chain, we say that it's plutonium-241. OK, this is when we are at the equilibrium. This is the, the, uh, the, the um, normalized value of plutonium-241 in a fast spectrum. And this is in a, in a, in a thermal spectrum is five times more than here. And look at the curium. Curium is almost a zero, and we have some curium in the thermal uh, uh, reactor. So for this reason, just because we destroy with fission in a faster spectrum the most hazardous uh, uh, radioisotopes, which are responsible for the uh, 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 radiotoxicity at long term, we can improve dramatically the waste management. And this curve translates this concept 
I mean, these basic uh, comps, in, again, in numbers. Let me explain. Uh, this is the relative radiotoxicity. So, is, I mean, uh, uh, hypothetical, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter, is a normalized value of the natural uranium, okay? Let's say one. These are the curve of the uh, 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 radioactivity, or better, the radiotoxicity, okay, in different fuel cycle scenario. What is the goal of sustainability? I think that even from a, let's say, philosophical viewpoint, the best job that they can make is the following. Well, I have the nature in front of mine, okay? I, I, I extract from, from the earth uh, some material, okay, which has uh, some radioactivity, radiotoxicity. Okay? I make whatever, I, I mean, I, I, I produce something good for, 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 uh, for uh, the humanity. I produce electricity or I, 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 I can, uh, I mean, facilitate uh, the, the, the production of some industrial uh, product. And then I put again the same amount of radioactivity, radioactivity inside the earth. I think that from a sustainable viewpoint, this is the best job that you can do. Because it's like, a, I've, I, at the end of the day, I untouched the, 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 the nature because I extracted some radioactivity. And then I put again the same radioactivity. The result is zero in terms of environmental impact. But I did something for the humanity. I produced electricity. I've, address of the moon electrical uh, application and so on and so forth. So our goal is this one, is to extract uh, natural uranium from the mine and then have at the end uh, on the earth the same radioactivity that I have extracted from, from, from the earth, but having doing something, produce electricity. Is it possible? But in a very different uh, way, is it possible with any kind of, of nuclear power plant? But in a, different, in a very different way, if, for instance, I use a light water reactor operated in an open fuel cycle in which so I just uh, use uranium, but I have to manage plutonium, minor actinine, and fissure products. I can make the job in, in how much time? Well, in even, uh, I mean, one million uh, years, okay? I can do that but in a very long time. If we burn not only uranium, but also plutonium, which is responsible for the long-term radioactivity of the, of the fuel, then the situation is better. And they need just 10,000 years to make the job done, okay? So if I recycle plutonium, like for instance I do with, the, with some of the light water reactor operated in, in France, the situation is much better, and they can do the job in some 10,000 years. But if I use a fast reactor in a closed fuel cycle in which I recycle not only plutonium, but also the minor actinides, then I can do the job in some hundred years. And on top of that, there is a, a dramatic volume reduction of the waste, okay? So using fast uh, reactor, we can do that. We can uh, uh, um, uh, manage the high level waste in this time frame, hundreds of years instead of even millions of years, and with a much lower volume to be, to be managed. There is also another effect which is very important that is very well known. <coughs> the decay means also heat emitter, okay? And if we reduce the, the, the radioisotope which are, which are responsible for the heat emission at long term, uh, the, um, of the um, uh, radioactivity at long term, we also dramatically reduce the heat generated by this waste, which means that not only I reduce the volume of the waste, but I reduce dramatically also their heat generated, and which means that I can compact the nuclear waste in the geological repository much more than 
using a light water reactor in an open fuel cycle. And this is the, 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 the numbers associated with that. There is a study which was conducted in, in the US, but similar study was also conducted in Europe, in Japan, which shows uh, the factors of reduction of volume in the geological repository adopting advanced the fuel cycle, like the one of fast reactor in a closed fuel cycle. OK? I think that we can uh, stop uh, here. However, in my presentation, you can find uh, uh, many other information, not only on the other advanced reactors, but also on fast reactors, OK? For instance, uh, there is, a, a, I mean, a, a long list of all the fast reactors which have been operated uh, over the, uh, the years, even from the beginning of the nuclear era. There are all the fast reactors that are in operation uh, today, as well as the ones which are considered in the frame of the Generation 4 International Forum. That's it, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much.